Big Cracker Lucky. Not a bit rainy. I'll take some rubbish to the bin. So gross. Today, I want to get the rest of the spring seeds sown, including the vegetable ones, because it's looking like we're having an early spring. Last year, I don't know if you remember, but I sold mystery packs of dahlia tubers. I think I had 10 tubers for, uh, I think it was $75, including post. And yeah, it was kind of fun because some of you that bought them sent me pictures of what you got. Uh, this year with the dahlia tubers, uh, we are gonna get them in pretty soon. The weather seems, it, it's cold and wet today, but despite that, it seems like we're gonna have a very early um, spring. We're hoping for an early, final frost date uh, we're just going to get our tubers in risk it for the biscuit and then what we've got left over I might pop up for sale because I've got some really good ones for cut flowers as you know so just keep an eye out if you go to my website www.nobleflowers.com.au there's a sign up for a newsletter there if you want to be notified I will send it I still haven't sent anything out via email to anybody yet but I will send out when daily tubers are live on the website I'll also announce it here and on Instagram but the people that have their emails in will know first when I was in on the, on the phone to his family in Mexico I need to pick some daffodils I meant to do that last night I forgot I still need to put this hose reel up too. It's been probably a year. I'm terrible at stuff like that, aren't I? Okay, let's go pick some daffs. Aren't they pretty? This is really hard. I really love daffodils and I don't want to pick them now. But look, I've got such pretty ones. And all of these are about to open up, look. They're gonna be so pretty. My daffodil garden is looking really cute. And in that gap in the middle, I wanna put all the glads. It's very hard. You start growing flowers and then you're like, actually, I don't wanna pick them. <laughs> I just wanna look at them. A lot of flowers which is amazing. So I, I purchased all of these. Lilies, Chrissy's, some thryptamine, mini gerberas, stock, and I just got one packet of disbuds. I got all of these blushing brides, these, which are these ones, and the pretty in pink. I'll put the botanical name up on the screen for you. We've got, I've got a little bit left over from last week here. They last weeks and weeks though. So, but I will use those first. The Erica Lusitanica, some daffs, but I just, I stopped picking them because I don't want to use them. <laughs> I want to keep them to look at for me. You know, this is four years into flower farming now. We've always been gardeners since we were both young. So <clears throat> we've come to this realization that part of the joy of having a flower farm is looking at the flowers. So we're doing things a little bit differently this year and you'll see as the season moves on what we mean by that. But we want to enjoy more of the beauty of it and we want others to enjoy the beauty of it. And if we're picking absolutely everything that we have, we are just in commercial production mode and we don't want to do that. Anyway, you'll see what I mean as the season moves on. And then we've got some of this foliage. I need to get the name of this for you because I don't know what it is. And Marina is getting me some more. I bought these as well. This is from a local farmer. She's got the most amazing native farm. And it's one of the reasons why we aren't jumping heavily into natives. We have lots of really amazing native growers in this area already. And it's nice for us to support them on their farms rather than us also grow natives. Natives have all, are also a very, very, very long-term investment. And I tried to grow some years ago and I had a lot of trouble here with, you've seen all the animals we have here. We've got the hares, the rabbits, the wallabies, and they all eat the natives. I'm up at Mel's house and she grows 
Natives, and you're building a very big native farm, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. This is Mel. <laughs> She's the native grower of the area. <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> you want me to throw it? No, you don't want to give it to me. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi, Arlo. <laughs> okay, so Mel's got everything in rows down here on the side of the hill, and they all love drainage, don't they? So the hill works perfectly, yeah. impromptu I hadn't planned that with her um, but she's keen to do a video just on her farm if you're interested let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a native and South African farm I'm back so I'm doing some stripping of these flowers I'm just prepping everything now anyway so what I've been doing is I just strip put it on the bench I just lay everything out rather than having to put everything in buckets because I'm gonna make these flowers up now and have them all ready. I don't have to sit anything. Whereas I guess in summer we've got flowers that we need to store in buckets and we are gonna build a cool room soon. So, well I say soon, I always say soon, but it could be who knows how long. So anyway, I've got a story for you. We had a little breakaway and it was so good. I've just been having this feeling that I'm not much of a beach person. I'm more of the hills and mountains and streams, but I've just been feeling like I need to put my feet on the sand. I don't know if you've ever had that, <laughs> that kind of urge where you just need to get near the ocean and put your feet on the sand. So, and I don't even like sand, <laughs> but I've just, my body's been feeling like I needed that. Um, so my daughter went to a camp down at the Mornington Peninsula. I'll put a map up. So it's down very far. She's at a school camp down the Mornington Peninsula for nine days and they have a family day on the Sunday. So we went down, we drove down Saturday night. So we got there and we've hung out down Mornington Peninsula. We've gone right down to this gorgeous area called Sorrento. I went all the way down to the National Park, but by the time we got down there, it was 5.30, really late. I didn't. Some of the national parks in Australia, I don't know if they do this in other parts of the world, they lock them. So you don't really want to get locked in a national park. I think the exit stays open. They've got, um, wish I had a film this, they've got these like uh, spikes that are just one way spikes. So to get out, the spikes go down as you drive over. But if it'll go the other way, it'd punch your tires. And then we just went to some beaches on the way back and it was so gorgeous and I loved it so much and it felt so nice. And it was just so nice to put my feet on the sand and James loved it so much. Shani had a good time. We found nice shells. Like it was just, we had a really good night. We ate like really nice ice cream because there's always, you can guarantee beaches in Australia, there's ice cream shops and fish and chip shops. So then the next day we go and visit Marlia at the camp, which was really nice too, but she was a bit off. We get home at like eight o'clock Sunday night absolutely exhausted. Eight o'clock the next morning, the camp rings me and says, Molly is really sick, you need to come and pick her up. <laughs> I just can't do another eight hour drive. Oh, a 10 hour drive to do this pickup for this kid. So anyway, we've got her picked up.
Vad känner du snart med? We just put our feet in the water and it's ice cold and I yell out, oh, who swims in water like this? Next thing you know, these two guys are getting in, but they're yelling out swear words. They're in. And now they're saying swimming is the best. <laughs> so anyway. Real quickly, this is the stock at the wholesaler. It's beautiful, it smells good, but I have noticed it's starting to hit the end of its season. It's not lasting as long in a vase and it does have a long vase life, but these are like, these are grown in Australia. They're most likely grown in Victoria. So you can kind of tell from the wholesaler what's in and out of season. They do have extended seasons on each end. So we didn't put our stock seed in and we've well and truly missed the boat on it. By the time it flowered, it'd be too hot. Um, and it's part of the cabbage family. And the really bad news is our, we must have got the timing wrong for our kale. So year two trying to grow really good cut flower kale, I think we failed again. So last year it grew, but the stems all fell over. We didn't net it. This year we've netted it. The stems never got long and they're starting to bolt to seed. So. We're gonna probably pull all of that out. I might transplant some into pots and stuff, but I, I'm not sure if there's any point now because our weather's gonna warm up and we can use those beds for something else. It's just a shame. I actually think what we need to do is put them in the cocoon tunnel and have them growing in there over winter so we can control the temperature a little bit better. We really, really get cold here. so. That colors them up really beautifully, but it doesn't help with their <laughs> growth and their stem length. So the, even though they're a cool flower, they do require a, a certain amount of the right temperature to actually produce well. And I know they're the proper seed, they're the proper commercial cut flower seed. So that wasn't the problem. The problem was us really. And I'm not sure there's much more we could have done about it, just not knowing how it was gonna grow in this climate. I've shown this so many times, but for anyone who hasn't seen it yet, I'm gonna show you how to wire gerber stems. So you need a wire. I use the 0.9 millimeter one. I actually cut them in half. So there's 10 stems in a sleeve and I, so I'll grab, these are the 45 centimeter wires. I'll grab five of them. If you've got these Falcos, they're in my Kogan store. Can you see that little notch right here? There's a little notch in there. You can actually cut wire with that. So you wouldn't cut it with the blades. <laughs> You'll wreck your secateurs. Cut it with that little notch. So you grab a jabra, grab a wire, and you just put your finger over the top of the jabra head there. Gently hold the back, poke a wire up into the back there till it hits your finger. I mean, there's the wire there, but you just have it at the level of your finger. The gerber will actually keep growing in a vase, so eventually that wire will pop out. But then all you do is just hold it real gently at the top and spin that wire. These uh, stems are very floppy. You just do that. Sometimes the gerber stems, last week I got some that were so fresh, they were real snappy, and it was almost just as much of a problem as having floppy stems, they were just, so easy to snap. So that, and then you're kind of bending your wire around the stem. You wanna be careful not to put too much pressure on the stem because you can snap your stem. I sort of hold it here. Like I hold the stem and the piece of wire, bend. I grab it back down there, bend. St I put my finger over the stem and the piece of wire, bend around and I'll just do that all the way down. Eventually you'll get so used to it, your hands will just stay in the same spot and your fingers will just twirl and grab, twirl and grab. Yeah. 
I always start with the large brocades first because then I've got the pick of the flowers. The pick of the flowers. <laughs> you know, I can put the nicest things together for those more expensive bunches. So what I've got here, this is a $55 bunch. I've overstuffed it because I just did. So here's the cost breaker. I can probably just pop that up a little bit more because it's one of the main stems. So these are $5. These, this is wholesale pricing, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, because they're $2.50 each. Um, 11, 12, 13, 50, 14, 50, 15, 50, 16, 17, 18, 19. This, this should be a $75 bouquet, which means I probably need to pull some stuff out of it. I'll take that out. Um, I think I'll take that out too, the fruit domain, because you really do have to keep with your pricing or you're going to go broke. There's a video on my channel about pricing flowers. I'm going to do an updated one soon. The old one's still pretty much the same information, but I'll just do an update. Um, yep. So that's a $55 bouquet roadside. I'm going to wrap it and I'll show you that. so good to get the flowers done. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. What time? Must be nearly one o'clock in the afternoon. I've got a couple more hours to go and sow those seeds, which means I may actually, for the first time in a very long time, get everything done that I wanted to get done today. just got in the car and shiny saw a dolphin or a shark it's not there it is out there it's right out there it just yeah it just came up again oh they swim so fast how cool 